Now that the climate data has been entered into the first sheet, we can move on to energy consumption. In order to effectively fill out the energy consumption sheet, you should have at least a hand drawing of what your greenhouse is going to look like with some basic calculations on it. For this example, I've produced a 3D model that you can take a look at, which has all of the pertinent information that you're going to need for this particular part of the design tool. In this particular illustration, you'll see a three-dimensional render of a passive solar greenhouse with all of the appropriate areas as well as the interior volume of the greenhouse. We've also dimensioned all of the components within the greenhouse in order to make entering the data into the tool very simple. In addition to the three-dimensional model, we created elevations for all of the different aspects. South, north, west, and east. You'll notice that on each of the elevations, we've tried to make the area calculation very simple so that it's easy to enter into the tool. So we've got a total area of 300 square feet. We've got a total with outdoor, which is 266 square feet. And that makes entering information into the tool very, very simple. Let's take this model now and enter the information into the tool so that we can see how well this greenhouse is gonna perform in the Calgary region. I'm going to place my illustration on the right hand side over here and I'm going to expand it so that we can see the numbers as we need them. But first, notice, now make sure that tab number two is opened up in your spreadsheet. First, we're going to enter the name of the greenhouse that we're working on. Next, we need to enter the extreme minimum temperature. Notice the default number right here is populated from the climate sheet that we just entered. We also need to enter the minimum indoor design temperature or base temperature. And again, the temperature is easily accessible right here and it is 35 degrees Fahrenheit. The next piece of information we need is the interior volume of the greenhouse. So in our illustration, we had it right here. And you'll notice that this greenhouse had an interior volume of 8,000 cubic feet. Next, the greenhouse calculator asks if we're going to have a heated slab, and I'm going to say no. We're going to move into section 2.1, surface heat loss, which is for the roof. And you'll notice that this greenhouse does not have a roof surface. We are going to classify this surface right here as a glazing surface. So we're going to enter zero roof surfaces. Some greenhouses will have a roof surface, and so if they do, you'll enter that information into that area with the appropriate R value as well as area. Next, we're going to go to 2.2, which is surface heat loss for walls. Now for this particular part of the tool, you'll notice that we have four walls. So one, two, three, and four, which is the south, east, north, and west walls. So I'm gonna hit four. And for each of the aspects, I'm gonna put in a specific area. You'll notice now that we're looking at the east facade and the east facade has an area of 266 square feet, not including the door. And we're gonna choose an R value of 20. Next, we're gonna to go to the west facade and we're gonna look up the area and you'll notice that it has an area of 294 square feet, not including the window. And we're gonna choose an R value of 20. Next, we're going to look at the north facade, which has an area of 752 square feet, and we're going to choose an R value of 20 for that. Last, we're gonna choose the south facade, and notice that it has an area of 352 square feet, not including the windows. We're also gonna choose an R value of 20. And it should be noted now that we can see where the majority of heat is being lost out of the building with this data visualization over here on the right hand side. Section 2.3, we're going to calculate surface heat loss out of the glazing. The number of glazing surfaces is going to be dictated by the number of different areas within the respective orientation to north, east, west, and south, not including the primary glazing surface, which is the primary glazing area on the top of the greenhouse. So the south facade, we're going to classify this as one glazing surface, assuming that all of these windows are the same. 
The main glazing area on the top we're also going to count as one independent glazing surface. The northern wall we're going to call one glazing surface as all these windows are the same area and the same material. The west glazing surface we're going to refer to as one glazing area. And the east glazing surface we're going to refer to as one glazing area. And this is going to be the door. So when we look at the model, we can see that we've got a south glazing surface, a west glazing surface, a north glazing surface, and an east glazing surface. So we're going to enter in five different glazing areas. So we'll start with the north, and we'll notice that our total area for windows is going to be 1, 2, 3, 4 times 12, which is 48 square feet. And we're going to choose an R value of 1.9, which is the R value of the polycarbonate that we've chosen. For the east glazing, we're going to put in the R value for the door and its area, so 34 square feet. And we're going to choose a net R value of 8. For the west glazing, we have 6 square feet. And we're going to choose an R value of 1.9. For the south glazing, we're going to assume that all the windows are the same in material. The total area is going to be 48 and the R value is going to be 1.9. And for the final glazing, which is the primary surface allowing light into the passive solar greenhouse, we'll notice that it has a glazing surface of 894.42 square feet. And we're also going to assume that this has a R value of 1.9. Now again, you'll notice that the majority of the heat in this greenhouse is coming out of this glazing surface. Next, we're going to assume a vertical insulation with a depth of 48 inches and a perimeter of 120 feet with an R value of 20. Again, it shows us our heat loss there. We're going to assume that our building is leaky as it's a greenhouse. And as a result of all the data that we've been put, we can tell that this greenhouse is going to have a peak heat loss as it stands right now of 67,869. Now keep in mind that this model assumes that this heat loss is likely going to be happening at night when there's no sun, at which point there could potentially be a thermal curtain employed within this greenhouse itself. Notice that the glazing is the primary culprit for heat loss. So if the R value of the glazing was increased by a factor of two at night when there's no sun coming in, we can fairly safely assume that the peak heat loss in this greenhouse could be potentially cut by a factor of two as well. The reason I can say that is that by looking at the data visualization, the majority of energy being lost out of this greenhouse is coming from the glazing. And this is why thermal curtains play such an important role in the thermal dynamics of a passive solar greenhouse like this. During the day, the, these glazing surfaces are gonna let in more energy than they release, but at nighttime, they're definitely going to release more than they're letting in as there's no sun out during the night. So if you're gonna assume that you have a thermal curtain on here and you wanna figure out what your annual heat loss is going to be, go and find a thermal curtain that you can utilize and then come back up to the glazing surface and put in the respective R values that you expect as a result of installing a thermal curtain. So for example, if you chose a construction tarp which has an R value of approximately two, then you could assume that on the primary glazing surface, we might actually be able to get a glazing R value at night, which is when our peak heat loss is going to occur, of approximately four. So if we choose an R value of four, take a look at what happens to your annual heat loss. Your annual heat, heat loss is, is greatly diminished, but also your peak heat load is cut down by about a factor of 33%. So play around with different R values in this model and see how low you can go with regards to your peak, but also your annual fuel consumption in order to maintain the conditions inside of this greenhouse that you set in the climate model. You're now done the energy model.
and you can move on to heat loss and cost. The next step is to move over to sheet number three, heat loss and cost. This sheet was designed to help you establish how much it was gonna to cost to heat your particular greenhouse with the conditions that you've set. The first setting that you need to adjust is going to be the number of fuel sources. So you can choose between one or two fuel sources. The next decision you need to make is what your primary fuel source is going to be and what your secondary fuel source is going to be. Now to make this easy, we've given you a huge list of different types of fuels that you can choose as well as different units that the fuels can be selected in. So the primary fuel source in your greenhouse is likely going to be some fossil or readily available fuel that you can use that will allow your greenhouse to stay above the temperature that you've set in the initial sheet. The reason to do this is that if you're trying to grow food in your greenhouse for seasons of the year, you're going to want to have some sort of backstop measure that's going to automatically turn on and make sure that your greenhouse does not go below its critical temperature. So let's choose gigajoules and natural gas. And I know that in my own I know that in my own eco I know that in Alberta natural gas goes for about four dollars a gigajoule. I know that I can easily get a heater that is at least 85 um, I know that in Alberta that I can get natural gas for about three dollars a gigajoule. And I know that I can find a heater that gets at least 85 percent efficient. This means that the heater is going to utilize 85% of the energy and put it into the actual greenhouse itself. Now the next choice you need to make is how often you think your primary heater is going to be functioning. And so in our particular ecosystem, I'm gonna assume that, so in this particular greenhouse, I'm gonna assume that the natural gas heater is going to operate 25% of the time with the other 75% of the time being my secondary fuel. Now for my secondary fuel, I'm going to assume that I have access to wood, that my property produces wood for, that I'm going to have access to wood, and that a cord of wood is going to cost me around $200. So for my particular situation, I'm going to assume that I have access to wood, that the wood is going to be free, and that my wood combustor is going to also have an 80% efficiency. And so for my secondary fuel, I'm going to assume that I'm going to use wood, that my wood is not going to cost me anything because I'm going to be able to get scrap wood for free. And, <clears throat> and that my wood combustor is going to have an efficiency of 80%. I can then choose the species of wood that we're going to be utilizing. And because and I'm going to assume that I'm going to be burning pallets, which means that the wood is likely going to be pine, which will set the amount of energy that that particular species has per ton or per unit of measure. Now, because my wood stove is going to meet my heat source 75% of the time, my natural gas is going to be the backstop at 25% of the time, I know that my annual heating cost for this particular greenhouse is going to be about $31.13. Now, let's just assume that you were going to use 
Now let's just going to let's just assume that you're you were now let's just assume that you are going to actually have to pay for your wood. You could now put in a cost per cord of two hundred dollars. And you would quickly notice that the fuel cost for wood is going to far exceed the fuel cost for natural gas. And so you may choose to make different decisions based on different fuel choices that you make within your ecosystem. You can also change this secondary fuel to any of the other metrics in here. So we could, you can also change your fuel source to any of the other fuel sources available in here. So kilowatt hours as an example. And you can put in the cost per kilowatt hour at 15 cents. And from there, it would tell you how much it would cost to run your secondary fuel on electricity. So for the purpose of this sheet, we're going to stick, stick with wood. So for the purpose of this example, we're going to stick with wood in cords. We're going to assume that the cost per cord is nothing. And we're going to keep the wood at, and we're going to keep the wood selected at Jack Pine. This completes the fuel source sheet, and next we're going to move on to thermal mass calc. This completes the fuel. This completes the heat loss and cost sheet. I encourage you guys to play around with this and try different fuels, different percentages, um, and different options. And if you have any questions about this, please get in touch with us. If you're looking to design your own passive solar greenhouse and want help in choosing our value for your walls, a glazing material, the amount of heat or size of heater required to heat the greenhouse, your lighting system, thermal mass calculation, as well as designing a subterranean heating and cooling system, you will find that this tool makes passive solar greenhouse design infinitely easier. These videos will show you how to use the tool and if you're interested in purchasing the tool for your own passive solar greenhouse design, you can find information on how to purchase the tool at Small Farm Academy in the link below.